Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze how Tuchel's tactical setup shut down Real Madrid. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Chelsea in a 3-4-3 and Real Madrid also starting with a three-man back line. Real Madrid was more of a 3-1-4-2 with Casemiro just ahead of the back three, Cruz and Modric a bit higher, and then you had Hazard playing just off Benzema. So when we break down this game, we're going to focus on how both sides look to approach the game out of possession and how Conte and Jorginho played a key role in Chelsea's overall approach. First, we'll start with how Chelsea looked to press from the front, and it was very simple. They had Havertz, Werner, and Mount stepping towards the back three, with Azpilicueta and Chilwell pushing towards the wing backs. What you end up seeing from that midfield zone is that Conte and Jorginho would be tasked with dealing with Tony Cruz and Luka Modric, and Casemiro was often dropping off deeper to get on the ball. Chelsea were okay with Casemiro picking up the ball in those deeper positions, and frankly, when he looked to play passes, they were often wayward. That leaves Eden Hazard floating between the lines, and he was often dropping off deeper to get on the ball, and that's when you would see Jorginho stepping forward to close him down. Benzema was in a 3v1 battle against the center backs, with Thiago Silva often tracking his movement. If Benzema shifted out into the wider areas, Christensen or Rudiger would close him down, and the same thing applied to Eden Hazard. There were times where Conte and Jorginho were stepping towards Modric and Cruz, and Hazard would look to drop off into those inside pockets of space, but Christensen would step tight on him, and Rudiger would apply the same pressure. However, there appeared to be a clear ploy to get Hazard on the ball. Mendy and Vinicius were pushing higher up the pitch to peg back Chilwell and Azpilicueta, but when you look at those two individual battles, the Chelsea wingbacks were often the victors. However, that forces Nacho and Militao to shift across to cover the spaces in the channels, and that's where Casemiro played a key role. So given the threat of Chelsea in transition, if Madrid lost the ball, you could have Casemiro dropping off into that back line to create a four for additional cover. However, what we ended up seeing from Madrid was that Cruz and Modric were shifting out into those inside pockets as well, trying to get on the ball, and that's where it did look like more of a diamond because you have Casemiro just ahead of Ramos, you have Modric and Cruz shifting wider into those inside narrow pockets of space, and then Hazard was dropping off deeper in search of possession. There were times where Cruz and Modric dropped as deep as their back line to get on the ball, but that didn't affect Chelsea's overall shape. They simply had Havertz or Mount stepping towards Modric and Cruz when they looked to step forward, and that ultimately freed up time and space for Conte and Jorginho to hold their position and track the movement of Hazard or at times Benzema dropping off deep into that zone. Here we could see Cruz in an inside left position pulling out Havertz, and that relieves Conte of his pressing duties while Jorginho monitors the movement of Hazard dropping into the halfway circle. As Cruz shifts onto his right foot, he's looking to bypass Havertz, and that's when Hazard checks into the ball, but Jorginho is aware of his movement and he begins to step forward. Once Hazard receives possession, he's instantly swarmed by Jorginho in the midfield zone, and that's where you see Hazard losing possession and Jorginho springing a Chelsea counterattack. There was a time where we ended up seeing Havertz tracking the movement of Casemiro to the left of Nacho, and that's where you have Conte blocking off the passing lane into Cruz. When Casemiro looks to play the ball forward, he's trying to find Hazard between the lines, but that's where you see Jorginho making a sliding tackle as he steps away from Modric to win the ball, and he ends up guiding it into the path of N'Golo Kante. When Kante receives the ball, he turns, and he locates both Cruz and Modric out of position, and that's where you see Mason Mount dropping off Militao into a pocket of space to receive the ball. Conte splits both of the Real Madrid midfielders to find Mount breaking towards Militao and Sergio Ramos, and that's where you could see Chilwell breaking beyond Vinicius to break down that left channel. When Mount slides the ball into the path of the left wing back, that's where you could see Werner making a run between Nacho and Ramos, but when Chilwell plays the ball in towards the six yard box, it's Werner who runs into an offside position. Chelsea were equally organized out in the wider areas. 
For instance, if Benzema shifted towards the touchline, Aspilicueta would stick tight to him, and Christensen would stick to Mendy and vice versa. If Hazard shifted towards the right touchline to pull out Chilwell, then Rudiger would focus on Vinicius unless one of Jorginho and Conte were available. Meanwhile, it's important that we briefly look to Madrid's press as it was integral to the overall outcome of the game. Initially, Zidane's men started well with Benzema and Hazard stepping towards Christensen and Thiago Silva, and then Luka Modric was pushing forward to close down Rudiger, with Casemiro stepping towards Jorginho, Cruz on Conte, and then Madrid had a 5v5 with their backline. However, as the match persisted, what we ended up seeing was that Modric and Cruz weren't stepping out to the spare center back, and at times it was Rudiger pushing forward to get himself into the final third, and he actually forced Courtois into a quality save. Once Tuchel identified that the Real Madrid shuttlers weren't pushing out to Christensen or Rudiger, he encouraged the Chelsea center backs to push forward towards the half line, and once pressure was applied, it created gaps for the Blues to bypass the Real Madrid press, to get their teammates into their third. In the build-up to Chelsea's opener, you witness Modric stepping towards Jorginho and Cruz blocking off the passing lane into Conte as he steps to Christensen. As Christensen steps into Madrid's half, what's important here is that Cruz does slip and that creates a bigger gap for Christensen to split the Madrid duo for Conte. When Conte receives the ball, he's already on the half turn because he knows Nacho isn't tight on him, and that's due to the fact that he was expecting Cruz to block off that pass. This enables Conte to dribble across Nacho and poke the ball beyond Casemiro for Werner backing into Sergio Ramos, but what's important here is Conte bypassed two Real Madrid players and he's continuing to break towards goal. When he receives the ball, he now has Militao stepping towards him, and although Werner's passing lane is blocked off, Havertz is free to receive the ball in left half space to place him in a position to put Chelsea ahead. This game was about Jorginho and Conte winning possession in that midfield zone and quickly facilitating the ball out into the front three and to Chilwell who was consistently bombing beyond Vinicius who wasn't looking to track back from a cruise free kick. We could witness Conte and Jorginho blocking off space between the lines with Azpilicueta tight on Benzema and Werner ready to track Modric. When Modric anticipates Werner's pressure behind him, he looks to split the Chelsea midfield duel for Benzema, but it's Conte who steps into his pass and he ends up bypassing Modric by flicking the ball over him to set Werner free. As you can see, you have Werner beyond Cruz and Modric looking to break at the Real Madrid backline, but Casemiro's there to provide cover and it allows Werner to break forward and that's where you see Chilwell bombing forward beyond Vinicius to set Chelsea into an attacking position but they failed to make the most of this position. Here you could see Mendy looking to bypass Aspilicueta to square the ball to his Real Madrid midfielders, as Jorginho and Conte are within close proximity of Benzema. When Mendy plays that square ball, it's Jorginho who steps in to win possession, and now you could see all three Real Madrid midfielders ahead of him, with Havertz looking to break beyond them. So Jorginho ends up clipping the ball into the right channel to set Havertz free, and he only has Sergio Ramos who just returned from injury to beat in a 1v1. That ultimately results in Havertz taking on Ramos 1v1 towards the box, with Werner's run pulling away Militao, and that's where you see Mount and Chilwell making unmarked runs into left half space. However, from that position, Havertz ends up going towards the outside to take on Sergio Ramos, and the Real Madrid midfielder ends up poking the ball out for a corner. Zidane's attempt to alter the game witnessed Valverde and Asensio come on for the wingbacks, and ultimately it provided more energy down the right-hand side, and it presented a new challenge for Azpilicueta, as now he was faced with a direct attacker. However, Chelsea were able to cope with that threat despite Valverde providing energy to cause Chilwell some issues, and then he reverted to a 4-2-3-1 by bringing on Rodrigo for Casemiro. However, despite the system change, Conte and Jorginho still played a pivotal role in that midfield zone, then even in the build-up to the second goal, Pulisic is applying pressure to Sergio Ramos, but focus on Conte's position just beyond Cruz. When Ramos attempts to clear the ball, it falls into the path of Nacho who's within close proximity of his Real Madrid teammate, but you could see Conte running beyond Cruz and looking to get to that loose ball. 
Look how much ground he has to pick up. But he's still able to win the challenge with Nacho. And now that creates a 3v2 break as he has Mount and Pulisic ahead of him. Conte ends up carrying that ball towards the Real Madrid box. And because Mount is dragging away Militao and Ramos is coming towards the ball, it creates an avenue for Conte to slide the ball into Pulisic to place him into a position that resulted in Mason Mount's goal. So as you can see, the key to Tuchel's tactical success here was the role of Jorginho and Conte. They were able to dominate the center of the pitch by limiting the threat of Tony Cruz and Luka Modric, but they also did a very good job of denying the supply line into Karim Benzema and to Eden Hazard with the help of their center backs. But more importantly, they also played a crucial role in creating high quality chances and playing a key role in both goals. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.